What's going on guys, this is Damien from The Lookout and welcome to our tier list for BT21 archetypes. This is my favorite time of the spoiler season, I love doing tier lists, I know you guys enjoy them a lot. So we're gonna have two tier lists, uh, today we're doing BT21 archetypes and then tomorrow we're doing BT21 meta tier list. So make sure to come back for that one, but before we begin... Huge shout out to our patrons, The Coffee Club, Ryan, Dixon, Adnan, Frank, Bryce, Jakub, Miguel, Nave, Scotty, Derek, and Golden Feather Kiryu. Guys, thank you so much for supporting us, for buying us coffee and keeping this machine going. If you want to become a member of The Coffee Club, you absolutely don't need to, but it's like $2 if you want to support us this way. Link to our patron is in the description below. You can also join the channel to get some exclusive emotes it's it's fun basically yeah it's a good way to support the channel because we do all of this for free guys <laughs> so but once again you absolutely don't need to do this and uh, yeah i think that's it let's finally jump into the tier list okay guys here we are with the tier list so let me quickly explain the tiers Tier 0 OP should be banned, you know, like, uh, let's call it Gogeta and Sin tier. So, these things just flat out should be banned. There is nothing that's going to tier 0. Uh, then tier 1 is meta defining. These are the best decks from the set. These are the decks that are going to be prominent in the meta game. The decks which have the highest chance of topping and or winning events. Those go into tier 1. Tier 2 is competitive. So these are both your decks which can top, but not as often as tier 1. And your rogue decks. You know, these are a cut above the casual decks, basically. Very good decks which stand a good chance in a competitive environment. Tier 3, casual decks. So uh, don't expect to win with them at various events uh, don't expect to top with them but they're good for locals they're good for casual play tier 4 actual trash so let us begin all right so we are beginning with shlong ku himself yes the big dong shlong furious masturbatorku shlongku is here um and I'm going to controversially, you know, I'm going to controversially say a couple of things about this deck. I've heard that this deck is phenomenal. I've heard that this is the next crit aggro deck. Um, that there is a lot of potential for this deck to be the next, the next red deck. You know, it's gonna be like super aggressive. It's gonna crit a lot and stuff. So I did not test it, but I did make a breakdown. I mean, like, I didn't test it extensively, but I did make a breakdown. It's coming out next week. I went over all of these cards, and I am not sold on this one. Like, I'm just not sold on this one. I think... I don't think it's even tier 2, to be honest with you. Because here's the problem with Shlonku. Um, for him to work properly, if you're looking to build it like in archetype and for him to work properly, even a bit outside of the archetype, you need to get into later turns of the game. Otherwise, he just, he just kind of breaks, not, not breaks, but he's super slow and what you want to do with him keep piling on this aggro pressure with critical attacks it's just kind of too slow um, the leader requires a Z battle card out specific Z battle cards for uh, power pole to even give your cards critical so that's immediately a problem because you're not going to be playing your Z battle cards on turn 2 because then Piccolo just dies and doesn't do anything so turn three, you're looking to give your Z battle cards, not Z battle, your Goku cards critical. None of them have protection, if I remember correctly. And at that point, it's kind of slow, because you can get your free drop out on turn three, 
only on turn 3, uh, I mean from turn 3 onwards, and then your big boss monster is like on turn 4, and it's still not enough pressure, it's a couple of critical hits here and there, relatively late, because now in modern Dragon Ball we end around like turn 5, turn 4 sometimes, by that time you didn't put on enough pressure, so you're already subjected to a lot of uh, floodgates at that point. Now, you're always subject to floodgates at that point, but the problem is you didn't pile on the pressure which you wanted to pile on by that point. That's the issue here. I just believe that it is way too slow. I think that Shlonku is way, way too slow. I think it's probably the most overhyped archetype in this in this entire set. I think this guy is just casual. I think this guy isn't gonna do anything. Like, I honestly don't believe that this deck is gonna do anything. Controversially, apparently. So, let's jump into the next one, and that is garlic. And now, guys, I love garlic. I love garlic so much. I cannot wait to show you the how to play guide. To me, this is like the balanced sin, basically. It's balanced red sin. Unfortunately, he's not really that good. Um, he has some cool abilities. He has some cool abilities. He has a way not to die. He negs a whole bunch. He really negs a whole bunch. Um, he he's a wish leader. That's always awesome to see. But is he like tier one or tier two? I don't believe that he is. I think this is another one of those uh, just casual decks. I think garlic is just casual. Honestly, I might think that it's like a bit above Shlonku, but like let's let's not cause people to unsubscribe. So uh, I think garlic is good. I think garlic is good. I think that he's not good enough. I don't believe that this is going to be a competitive deck, but I think it's a good casual deck. I enjoy it a lot. Then we go to Oob. Oh man. So, the thing about Oob is, well, here's the deal. I'm sorry it takes so long to form a sentence when it comes to Oob. Uh, we did a how to play Oob guide, you can check it on the channel. Um, it did, as a video, it did about as good as Oob itself, so that says a lot. Uh, Oob is just... If you look at it archetype-wise, Ub is bad. If you look at everything that came out in the set, Ub is just flat out bad. It's it's I would call him trash tier. However, however, tournament pack card just made this deck so much better. It made the deck so so much better. Like, you have to run four copies of that one. It's just insane. Then you need to look at a different perspective, which is you are charging Z energy for your opponent. We've talked about this actually being good. Because, like, they still need to pay for it. Are they going to play suboptimal plays to use the Z energy that you gave them? Not sure about that one. So um, you give your opponent Z energy. Now, originally, originally, the thing was it doesn't matter because the dominant decks, which were SS4 Gogeta and Red Sin, would charge so much Z energy that it wouldn't matter anyway. Like, it, it wouldn't matter if you gave them 20 Z energy because, like, they charged like 5 a turn and they just keep using it. To them, Z energy is nothing. So, back then, the argument of, hey, it doesn't matter really, because the meta decks don't care about XSZ energy, because they have it so much. That argument isn't valid anymore, because 
yeah because those decks aren't around anymore so now we need to look at it from a perspective of you're playing a weird hand control deck a very weird blue z energy hand control deck in a metagame without sin and gogeta and now red decks will well not just red all decks will value this Z energy charge a bit more than they used to value it because now they don't need to charge their own cards into it so considering that and considering the promo card how actually how viable is Ub's strategy at the moment and I don't believe that he is competitive I think that he is still casual I think that I am wrong. I think that I'm wrong and that Ubi is going to surprise us. I want to believe that Ubi is going to surprise us. But to be safe, I think Ubi is just casual. However, the tournament pack card is just phenomenal. It's, it's phenomenal. Now we are getting to the better decks, basically. Baby we just put out how to play baby go check it out on the channel put a lot of effort into that one to show you how actually sequence your plays on turn two really proud of that proud of that video go check it out so for baby uh, i'm just gonna say what i said last time baby steer one baby's meta defining it's probably the next best blue deck after you know and i mean android 21 is going to give it trouble because it's blue on blue basically but i think that this is the next best blue deck because baby uh baby is insane value there is so much value in this deck it's value it is free plays it has a boss monster which brings free bodies to the board and then just keep swinging it has a mini dread destroyer in its tp card which should have been in the set to be honest it's just it's phenomenal i believe that this is a tier one deck it's a deck that does everything he basically does everything he has card draw he has removal he has free plays and he's blue he has access to d magic to senzu bean so yeah this guy does so much i think this is gonna be the next year one deck however i want to point out one very important thing it's not gonna be an easy deck to pilot i don't think this is gonna be an easy deck to pilot so uh, we will see how often it tops depending on that because baby even after turn two requires proper sequencing for him to do stuff that he wants to do so you need to keep that portion in mind but with that being said yeah i believe that baby is definitely tier one in my opinion it's tier one and you know so is gohan i i'm not even going to pretend to talk and think about like oh what do you do where do you put gohan gohan is tier one gohan is the best green deck that we've had since king cold came out like even cooler is cool but even cooler didn't sadly perform that well okay not maybe king colossal like reboot cell came out so gohan definitely the best green deck in the game we will have a how to play guy guide out next week i think because i want to get all of them out before the set releases um I believe that the best way that the correct way to play gohan is to play as little of the archetype as you can just play whatever you need for gohan to awaken and to z awaken and then just play generic stuff i think this is the green generic good stuff leader that we were waiting for so i think gohan is gonna be tier one definitely my voice is a bit cracking but yeah sorry about that anyway oh my god 13 minutes we're actually doing very well timing here sell we're gonna leave self sell for last i'm gonna show you why ssb flip now 
I have filmed this tier list twice, to be honest with you. I have filmed it twice, and um, the first time around it was just after the ban list, and I've placed this deck much higher than I now believe it belongs in. Uh, the thing is with SSB Flip, it's like Icarus, basically. It's a the thing with yellow decks in general, it is um, because yellow, like blue, but yellow has this in higher quantities, is a good stuff color. It has so much arsenal power in its generic cards. The, the smaller your engine is, the better the deck is, basically. You can see this with Majin Vegeta. Majin Vegeta barely runs anything from its engine. You have the leader, you have the servant card, and then like you have the Z deck because you need to have it, we don't even count that. And then you have the Goku, and that's it. That's the entirety of the engine that currently the best yellow deck runs. So the smaller the engine, the better, and that's that was the thing with Icarus. Icarus drew a bunch of cards. And it played, I think, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while, but I believe that Icarus only played... What did he play, man? He played four higher dragons and that was it. I believe that was everything from uh, from its archetype. And everything else was just generic. So um, when it comes to SSB Flip, it's a deck which you can run only with the leader you don't need a single archetype card not counting z deck of course but you don't need a single archetype card to make a yellow good stuff deck with ssb flip because the only thing that you want to be doing is drawing and you draw two you just draw two flat out with the leader with nothing else and the leader is a yellow saiyan which really means a lot having a yellow saiyan le leader tag is really really powerful in yellow um, but that considered those things considered and you should run at least a bit of your engine just so that you can get some bonuses from your later all things considered the deck has one huge problem and that is it flat out loses it loses so much power if you're playing against a deck which doesn't need to swing at your leader that's the big issue if you're playing against so two things if you're playing against a leader that doesn't need to swing to gain advantage in Droid 21 for example um, this deck loses a lot of its draw power or if you're playing in a slower matchup where your opponent doesn't need to pressure you, your opponent has no reason to pressure you, to pressure your leader. Let's say it's a grindier controlled matchup, where your opponent is fine just removing your board and building his own presence, this leader just flops. Because you just bricked SSB's draw engine. As long as you're not attacking into it, it's not a drawing too. So that's the problem. With this deck the archetype itself is extremely bad the archetype is just flat out bad i believe i don't think that it's good i think that it's better as a good stuff leader but then it breaks when you don't swing into it so yeah i don't believe at the end of the day i don't believe that this is going to be a competitive deck i not competitive uh meta defining I thought that it was going to be the next best, the next best yellow deck, just because you don't need anything else. However, however, it is weak. It is weak to um, not being able to draw, and it's easy to play around. And slower, grindier matchups will just eat it alive. If you're playing. I believe if you're playing Golden Frieza versus this deck, you're probably winning. You're probably winning. If you're playing in Android 21, you're flat out winning. If you're playing anything that wants to go into the longer game, 
you're just winning against this deck if it is built is a good stuff if it's built with archetype cards you're probably winning so yeah um that being said that being said where does it belong i think i think the thing that really carries this one is the fact that it is a yellow saiyan and that you don't need anything so if you're playing against a grindier deck you will lose likely but if you're playing against something aggressive that's where you get the upper hand because you just keep drawing like crazy how aggressive the current man the upcoming meta is going to be i am not sure so for now i'm just gonna put him like here i don't think that this one is gonna be good like i don't the more i think of it the worse it is golden frieza on the other hand golden frieza swap ladies and gentlemen golden frieza is the better yellow deck in bt21 it is one of the best yellow decks that we will have yes yes feel free to laugh um it's really really good it's really stupid good um take a look at all of its archetype cards it's just man it's so good so the reasons i need to say some reasons so i'm gonna spill some beans um not a lot of people are talking about this one i believe because it is so good so it's just like keep it hush but um here are the things it's basically it's five drop which blanks skills and his barrier blocker and you get him out for a single energy a single energy to get him out is so goddamn good it is so stupid good it's like think trunks jita now a lot of people will will argue that the bulk of trunks jita's power still comes from the free drop because it's it has barrier it is blocker it is 19k and it's just awful awful to play against because you need to play around it the entire time this one does the same but instead of resting it blanks cards which is infinitely better so think of frieza as trunks jita with frieza's engine uh, with cold bloodlust and then just put in like a bunch of other cards in it like this one this one is phenomenal this one is gonna catch so many people off guard trust me this is like trunks jita engine with a free drop and just it is five here is it going to be tier one i don't think so i think it's going to be competitive i think this one is going to be competitive definitely it might end up being meta defining it might just end up being meta defining the problem is it's very linear that is the problem you can identify its lines of play and if you save your counters to hit frieza's free drops you can break him the problem is one drop has all the protection on the planet five drop has barrier so you're you're never touching five drop but free drop has nothing like that one has absolutely nothing going for it so um the way to fight this deck is just by hitting the free drop there is only one free drop in the game and that is the promo one which has some sort of protection and that is deflect and that is relevant so the promo one is probably gonna cost like crazy but i think that this guy this guy is like insane this guy is so stupid good now android 16 there was a lot of fuss about this one and then it just kind of died out as i think that people realize that it's not as good as it seems to be 
Um, yes, you can do bad omen. You can definitely do bad omen. But there is one thing about this deck that flew under the radar for a lot of people. He's green. That's the issue here. The problem is that he is green. And because he is green, he's losing so much power that other blue-green android decks have. Because those decks are blue. And those decks get cool blue stuff which works only with a blue leader. Android 16 doesn't get that. That's the thing. That's the reason why this one isn't good in the end. It's very overhyped. Um, think Invoker. Think Invoker in a way that the original Invoker was super strong because it was blue. The, the newest one is bad because it's red. But if it were blue, it would be phenomenal. That's the same thing with this one. It's strong, but it's bad because it's green. If it were blue, it would have been much better. If it were blue and it did the exact same thing, it would have been just insane. But it's green. But I still believe that it's gonna see like at least some play, so I'm gonna put him in competitive. Now, let me just check how much I have upset people with this tier list. Uh, I think tier 1 is fine. I think tier 2 is fine. I think Shlongku is just awful. Garlic and... Yeah, these are... I think SSB Flip is still going to do something. So I'm going to put him into tier 2 anyway. Because it can draw 2. Theoretically. Let's put him in tier 2. And now we go to Cell. Cell is OP. Cell, Cell is just flat out broken. Cell is the strongest deck in the game. Is the strongest deck in tier, uh, in tier in BT twenty one. It is so strong that Bandai had to limit its power to the fact that it can't even run cards in its own archetype. It can't run the bug. It's so strong. That Bandai had to hit its archetype locked cards and take one of them away from him just to contain Cell's massive power. Like, that's how strong it is. Everyone who was talking about like Cell being the next best deck is just... They, they were just correct, man. They, they, they were absolutely correct. This is the strongest deck in the game. And, uh, yeah... It got, it got hit so many times with Inarata, guys. Come on, like, the more times you get hit with Inarata, the stronger you are. It's like Zenkai boost in Dragon Ball. So, yeah. Cell, tier 0. Cell is definitely tier 0, man. So, yeah. That, that's that's the tier list. And now, just so that no one is confused, let me just put it like this. Okay, yeah. That's the tier list. That's it for the video. Let me know in the comments below. What is your personal BT21 archetype tier list? Do you agree with my list? Do you disagree? I mean, always someone's gonna agree or disagree. These are just my opinions. So, uh, yeah. What do you think, guys? Is Cell the next tier 0 deck? Is Cell the most broken thing ever? To appear in Dragon Ball, I believe he is. I believe Cell is just flat out broken. But yeah, let's start trolling for a second. I believe that Shlonku is going to upset a whole bunch of people, but we will see in the comments. Guys, leave your thoughts in the comments. I read all of your comments and try to respond to everything. I love our little community. And please share the video, hit those like and subscribe buttons, help us get to 3000 subs. We have like 500 or so left to go. It's, it's gonna be crazy, man. Like, I can't believe that we are already this close to 3,000 subs. That's gonna be awesome. Anyways, guys, uh, don't forget to come back tomorrow. We're gonna have the BT21 meta tier list. And we're just gonna have a fun time. So, yeah, this has been Damien from The Lookout. And I'll see all of you in the next video.